Thank you, everyone, and welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday, holiday weekend. We're so glad you're here. Those of you here in person, those of you at First home, wherever sing, you may right, be, right, right. Okay. we're going to start our service right now by singing a very appropriate song called Grateful. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling. in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for this feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place. Grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing. That God is all there is, that God is all there is, God is all there is. Good morning. Good morning. We're delighted you've joined us in person or via Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of you who are here in, per in person, please remember to turn off your telephones. Thank you. So now let's join together in prayer. Turning within, I go deep where the connection is easier to be aware of. Here I am sure that God is all there is, that God expresses through me and everyone else we are forever joined. I know that peace is mine wherever I am this holiday season and on today, this first day of Kwanzaa. I release all temptations to judge or exclude any person, place, or thing from the bottomless well of love I have been gifted with. So grateful am I for this day, this truth, and the beloved Reverend Sidney, and all she has to say to me. <laughs> so I release my word <laughs> into the absolute law of mind, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God of God. 
Now please stand and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine kingdom. kingdom. Amen. And now we're going to sing, I Know, sung to the tune of Auld Lang Syne. going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes. There's the thing. Dong. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh.
God is love, God is peace, God's in everything I see, God's divine, God is mine, God's the very air I breathe, I give thanks for this truth, I embrace this love for me. For God is everywhere, and God resides in me. I know that it's true, I feel it deep inside. The love that I am, it cannot be denied. God's the joy, God's the peace, God's the good inside of me, God's the love that I am, the love that lives in me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. How is everybody? I'm really happy that the sun came out because I figured it's California and everybody is made of sugar and if it had rained, you'd all stay home because you didn't want to melt. So this is really good you're here. Oh my gosh, so tell God plans, tell God your plans, God's gonna laugh, right? Um, so many, I, this whole weekend has been um, plot twist weekend. And today is plot twist Sunday, adding to the just plot twist Christmas Eve. Every, you know, you think it's going to go this way and it goes somewhere else. You know, I often, when I pray, will talk about the divine dance that we're doing. And lately, it feels more like um, the make it up mambo. You know, you're going along and whoa, and don't step in that, and I'm doing, that. yeah. I, I want to be graceful and divine and awesome, and I'm more like a monkey with a wristwatch. <laughs> it's like that episode of I Love Lucy where she's trying to be a ballet dancer and she gets stuck. Yeah, anybody else feeling like that sometimes? <laughs> um, I love, I didn't know I was going to start my talk this way, but it came to me earlier. I love um, cooking shows. And I love America's Test Kitchen, because what they do is they go into this idea of a recipe and looking at what worked, 
and how can it be tweaked, how can it be made better? And I remember one time, and I read their cookbooks like novels, and there was one recipe that I read for French toast. And you think, French toast, that's such an easy, easy thing. And there were all of these, this whole process of, well, this worked really well. We dipped it in, in two eggs and a quarter teaspoon of flour for 30 seconds and found that if we did that, added a little melted butter and, and dipped it for 33.5 seconds, then it, and it just goes on and on. I thought, man, this is, this is, for someone like me, and I'm not a control freak, I'm a high-level planner, but for someone like me, <laughs> This is really good. So Sam and Diane did not know that this about me, and yet this is what they got me for Christmas because there's so much in life that requires us to really be in the kitchen, right, and to be cooking. And I'm, I'm a Friends fan, so any of you who recognize this, Central Perk. But <laughs> so um, I'm cooking. And this is what we do with our lives. Today's talk is about this idea of wins, whines, and wishes. So why, why did I choose that? Years ago, I was part of a ministry team, and we brought in a corporate trainer who also worked with spiritual groups so that we could become more efficient and more connected and, and really look at what we were doing and be of greater service to the community and, and that we could all rise up together. So... She taught us this process of examining our wins, our whines, and our wishes. And it's kind of like America's Test Kitchen, because you look at what works, you look at what doesn't, you tweak it, and then you look at what, what the result is, or what you want the result to be. So, as a group, we strive to practice in this, this um, climate of learning a new way of being, um, that which I had always known and believed that when we are available to that deep and always ever-present active integrity of God, we all thrive. And I thought, wow, that's really, really something. And how do we look at the plot twists that go on in our lives, the changes where some, suddenly we're doing the make it up mambo and don't step in that and oh no, what are we going to do now and turn left when we thought we were going to turn right? How can we keep this idea of thriving present. So the process was fun because it was healthy and it didn't involve shaming ourselves or blaming each other. It's easier to shame ourselves and it is easier definitely and a lot more sexy and attractive to blame someone else because that's a really convenient distraction, right? You don't actually have to look at your own accountability and how your thinking might have contributed to an experience going horribly wrong. And so I... Just as, as a piece of information, uh, when I got my practitioner training years ago, and those of you who have done the training know that we work a lot with the idea of shame and blame to heal those areas in our lives. Um, I think that we do shame and blame, or at least I, let me speak for myself, I know I can be drawn to going into that place when my ego, or let's just call it my guilt meter, would rather accuse than grow and change, right? Right? And egotistically, it's just less work. Um, I, I think I have a default belief that, though, that says it's better to distract with a lot of drama than take responsibility for my thinking. Anybody else? Like, <laughs> ooh, shiny, and hoping everybody will look at that instead of, oh my God, I did this wrong. And, and why grow? Why change, you know? Why must we uncover the mess that's going on inside that as we teach here, so clearly influencing and creating perhaps a mess outside. Why do we need to do that? And I'm just going to quote Dr. Mark here. It's because we're big now. You and I are wearing our big girl pants, our big boy pants. It's time that we really, really learn how to work this thing called life, how to live this thing called life, and how to thrive in it so that we're not blaming and shaming ourselves or others, that we get to be fully standing in joy and empowerment because we've decided we're just going to get with the program. It's just so much easier when we do that, you know? I really think so. So here we are, December 26. We're a mere several days away from crossing off 2021. And um, anybody have some wins and whines and maybe some wishes about that, about that experience? 
Um, you know, it's really tempting to just say, what happens in 2021 stays in 2021, right? But I'm clear that I have no interest whatsoever in repeating a lot of my own 2021. A lot of it was really great, but I don't want the world to repeat a lot of what happened in 2021. Anybody else? I know. So I think that means that we need to be fully conscious about what worked, what didn't, and best of all, ooh, what do we want? Who do we want to be in this brand new gift that we're about to unwrap? That's 2022. So on Christmas Eve, I don't know how many of you, were you all at the service or were you able to, to stream it? Wasn't it great? Oh my goodness. And that was a plot twist service too, because many things changed at the last minute and we all just danced with it and had so much fun. And I have to tell you, I am so blessed to be in this community. I've spent the last two days in tears because of all of the love and support that has been demonstrated and shared as I observe it with all of you between each other and to me and to the ministers. And it's just this wonderful, wonderful thing. And I'm really grateful to be here. That's such a big win for me for 2021, that I get to be here with, that we get to play together. You and I get to play together. And that's what we want. We just want someone to play with, right? We want to play on the level of spirit. So Dr. Mark quoted Meister Eckhart on Christmas Eve. And he said, become aware of what is within you. Announce it, pronounce it, produce it, and give birth to it. This is what the holy season is for. Announce it, pronounce it, produce it, and give birth to it. This is what the holy season is for. You know, and I, and I can say that metaphorically, we're kind of doing this every day, but how wonderful it is to do it intentionally and to take stock and to really regard what it is that we want to create in our lives and support other people in creating, right? So what if we announced, pronounced, produced, and gave birth to what is within us, knowing that we weren't afraid of what has come before, or that more importantly, we're not limited by what has come before in any shape or form? Has anyone ever here ever had a really powerful dream a desire, and yet you withheld your full faith and credit and participation in that dream because you were afraid that your fears, not being good enough, your limitations or screw-ups of past experience might somehow affect or, this is where we usually go, predict the outcome, right? There's a quote from Course in Miracles. What you think you are is a belief to be undone. Take that in for a moment. What you think you are, or who you think you are, is but a belief to be undone. Could it be that everything you and I have held against ourselves or believed about who and what we are is really a just big, huge pile of false conclusions based on someone else's treatment of us? Or their pain? Their beliefs about themselves? And could it be that everything you have believed about why you can't live a life of profound depth and meaning is really just a big pile of false assumptions about how life is or isn't? Ah, what if the beliefs to be undone were the only things standing between you and the life you've been seeking? What if that were it? What if that were it? It is. Because by the way, what if everything that has happened so far in your life has brought you to this time and place today so that you may recognize that the most perfect starting place of all is right where you are. It's right where you are. Right here, right now. So wins, wines, and wishes. That's the way I'm choosing to assimilate and reconcile and love myself through my stories my fears, and my ready-to-be-revealed beliefs. You see, I want to know what spirit is showing me. I want to know why. I want to reveal wholeness in every area of my thinking and my life, and it means taking a journey through my own mind, which can be a little scary. We have to go into our own minds, you know, never go there alone. That's why we have community. It makes it so much safer. But what if I begin with 
if I begin with what worked or is working, then I think I'm, I am well fortified to explore the rest. So if we look at what has been working, what are the blessings? What are the things that we can really look at? In fact, back in the fall, I spoke on one of our Wednesday nights about the wisdom pattern, which is something that Richard Rohr has written about. It's, it's an idea that, that you see demonstrated throughout history, which is that there is order, there is order or apparent order, and then disorder begins to emerge. And that's because a new idea is being birthed. And it means that the old, the old structures, the old paradigms, the old systems must be dissolved, must be broken away, must be released in order for the new order to appear. So you have order, disorder, new order. And that is the cycle of life. That's wins, wines, and wishes. It really is. It's America's test kitchen. <laughs> So I wanted to look at some wins from 2021. So I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath and consider, and you know, let the breath out, of course, <laughs> and consider any love, any joy, any shared moments of delight that might have occurred for you. Just regard them without judgment. They might be precious. They might be poignant. Were there celebrations? Were there discoveries? Did you meet new people? Did you try anything new? So for me, as I said, my win, my biggest win is that I get to be here with all of you. And I, I mean it. I, I show up early when I come into the office and I stay late and I'm just having the time of my life and I get to be with people who are intentional and we are looking at the highest idea for everybody in this community and what can we create and what do we want to see lifted up? What do we want to shine a light on so that we can improve it, so that it can be healed, so that it, it can be more of a gift for everybody involved. And that's the consciousness of this office. And it's really, really thrilling. It's really thrilling. Even if there, are, if there are conflicts or disagreements, they're all done within the context of what is wanting to be born, what wants to be revealed. So I know that it's not just me having wins. I know it's all of us. And with a backdrop still of social unrest, political upheaval, I know the world has seen wins too. And actually, I want to mention this because I got this alert late, late last night that um, Bishop Desmond Tutu had made his transition, had moved into his greater life. And I thought, wow, there's a life that has so impacted this planet, has so gifted us with, with guidance, with wisdom, with leadership and possibility. And one of his quotes that I gathered was this one, God's dream is that you and I and all of us will realize that we are family, that we are made for togetherness, for goodness, and for compassion. That's what a spiritual community is. Sometimes we have to move away from our birth families or our families of origin to be in chosen family. But all of us are families and that we are here to expand in greater compassion and understanding. So here are some of the wins. I googled good things that happened in 2021. And there, here's a few things I found in Washington Post. Um, the need to find a vaccine fast spurred scientists to impressive advances in coding diseases. And the rest of us learned how to take advantage of the digital age. I know that my awareness and my abilities have expanded exponentially from where they were two years ago. Innovations abounded in telemedicine and remote work, and we began to commune as never before with faraway friends and family. We can keep that up in sickness and in health. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I've been able to connect with cousins that, I mean, I hadn't seen in, in 10 or 15 years. And now, I mean, we're, we're able to Zoom with each other and see each other, and we're more connected than we were. Here's another one. The United States re-entered the Paris Climate Agreement. A good one. We also restored legal protections to Bears Ears, Grand Staircase Escalante, and other monuments protecting natural grandeur, indigenous tribes, sacred land, and a whole bunch of delicate ecosystems. Big win for 2021. It means that my son, and if he ever finds that right and perfect woman, 
and I get, you know, grandchildren, not, no pressure here, Forrest, <laughs> that they'll have a planet to live on and in. Self-care was elevated to more than just an idea of a really good mani-pedi, okay? Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka helped our collective understanding grow by speaking out during the Olympics about their own psychological struggles. That took such courage. They both stepped back from competition, choosing what they knew was best for them, rather than caving to the demands of a society that so often views these top-tier amazing athletes as objects for public consumption rather than human beings. Juneteenth was made a national holiday. That's a big one. <laughs> June 19 is the anniversary of the 1865 day when enslaved black people in Galveston, Texas, now dig this, finally heard, finally heard of the Emancipation Proclamation, which had been issued two years before. So this is huge that we are all now recognizing that this is important, that this matters. So wins are important. We have to give ourselves the chance to celebrate, to own, to embrace, and to know the joys and the good that have happened. And whether the wins are personal or global, we all need to recognize and own our areas of growth and discovery, accomplishment, and by the way, delight. Just simple delight. I mean, really, I, I, delight, you know, Find, biting into an apple that's juicy and ripe and wonderful. That's delight. It's really, really something, you know, just knowing that you are here in this building and the sun is out. It's delight. So once we've allowed for and celebrated the wins, the next thing we want to observe is the wines, you know? Okay. So this doesn't mean that we shame ourselves or blame ourselves or anybody else for failure or frustration. It means asking, what do I need to know about this disappointment or this loss, because many of us have had losses, in order to reveal a greater expression of God in my life? Your wines could be financial. They might be about a relationship that hasn't been fulfilling. It might be about the environment, long lines at the grocery store, or how you just wish you had more time to do the things you love, right? But whatever they're about, I want to invite you and encourage you to look at them squarely and ask yourself, what do I need to know about these? What do I need to know about this? Are any of my whines representing beliefs that are ripe and ready to be undone? Is there something here that's ready to be undone? So when I learned that a lot of my wines were essentially defending my victim consciousness, like, oh no, not again, poor me, it hurt. I didn't like finding that out about myself. It, it was, it, it, the make it up mambo, ooh, right? It's icky. But I was finally able to stop seeing myself as less than or unworthy. I was finally able to begin seeing myself as spirit sees me as God longs to experience itself through me and as me. Not wounded, not broken, not a victim, but fully blessed and fully divine. My willingness to love myself through my old beliefs gave me the muscle to plant and nurture new beliefs. Right? That's what we want to do. So that we can use the, the truth, the truth about our spiritual identity as a creation of spirit, to be that clean, wonderful, nourishing soil in which to plant the ideas, the dreams, the desires that we want to bring forth as we move into the realm of wishes, right? Wayne Dyer was well known for saying, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So I began to change the way I was looking at things, particularly myself, and the things I was looking at, and me, we changed. It's very interesting, isn't it? Because we live in a mental universe. We live in a mental universe. We are constantly creating and constantly demonstrating out here. It's just, are we aware of it? Are we awake to it? Are we seeing what's going on? Are we just numbly doing the dance and stepping in the piles of our stuff and our old beliefs and going, oh well, someone else's toes, no problem, no worries. Or are we taking a moment to stop and say, okay, I'm a creationist spirit. 
everything that's true about God is true about me. What can I do here? What can I know here? What wants to be healed here? What wants to be revealed? So wines, I think, like grief or sadness, are the cleanup crew for our lives, right? And once we've cleaned out the wreckage and the results of limited perceptions, we suddenly have space for newness. You know, I think we're ripe for evolution and change. And by the way, I think that's why we manifest problems. I think that's why we do it, to get our attention. Because when we are ready for evolution, when we're ready for change, when we're ready for growth, and once we have done that cleanup on aisle seven of our lives work, we are able to actually see what's possible. But if we're holding on to anything that tells us we can't or we can't do it very well or anything like that or we're not worth it or we don't get to, if we're holding on to any of those beliefs, which by the way, they're instilled in us so early in life, we get defined by the world and we let the world define us. It might be a teacher from third grade who told someone, I don't think Sydney could be in this play, she's not reliable. And then I heard that, and I went by that for a long time. It defined me. It might be some, the way that you were treated by someone, a parent, someone who hurt you. And we draw conclusions. And we define ourselves. But what I'm challenging all of us to do is on a daily basis, let God define us. And the way I like to say that is we can be defined by the world or we can be de divined by God. We can be divined by spirit. Whatever your word for God is, and I don't care what it is, and God doesn't care what it is. It might be spirit, infinite mind, universal life, George. It doesn't matter. But who and what are you divined by. It's not the world. It's not the world. It's not by what happened. It's by this fundamental truth that you and I are here by divine right, by divine intention. We are God's celebration of itself. Or as one of my teachers used to say, we are God's ta-da, ta-da. <laughs> Total acceptance of divine activity. Ta-da! Totally accepting divine activity. In fact, she used to finish her prayers and her treatments that way. And so it is. Ta-da! Totally accepting divine activity. You and I are God's ta-da! Right? We're here to celebrate, to be that dance, that wonderful dance in all of its messiness of God, of spirit, of life. It's all God. You know, that song that you sang was so beautiful because when we move into a perception of what God is, it leaves very, very little room for what we think God isn't. And I, I also had asked Susan to definitely sing the Hebrew because so much of, of what we learn comes from the roots, the ancient roots, which are shared by generations, by the way. And, and so many of that comes from that, that, that Hebrew knowing, the language, which so predates English, that, that there's just this I think psychic wisdom in it, you know? There's this wonderful wisdom in it. Ernest Holmes wrote a wonderful book, and I think it's one of the best things ever written. It's called This Thing Called You, and it's an immersion in radiance and possibility, and I want to share with you a couple of ideas from there. He wrote, every desire you have for betterment in life is some echo from that deep within which forevermore proclaims, behold, I make all things new. He also wrote this, and this is the one that really just, oh, I love this one. The desire you have to be something, to do something, is a mental echo in your mind of the spirit which already exists within you. So it's not something that's coming from out there. It might seem like it, but it's a response of the divine within you to what's going on so that you may stand in your full spiritual knowing, your full spiritual power and potential and be a light, to be a light. And he wrote, it is the spirit in you seeking an avenue of expression through you. It is the real self, the deep spiritual self. It is a transcendent, triumphant self. A transcendent, triumphant self. You know, 
150 years ago, there was this wonderful quote that, if I can find it, I know I wrote it down. There it is. Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, God will not have his work made manifest by cowards. But our courage comes from actually doing the thing. If we wait for that courage, we'll never get it. We just step forward into it and we do it. So when we pronounce, when we announce our wins and we say, yes, this is my desire, this is my dream, this is what I want to see happen, this is how I want my French toast to taste, when we do that and we pronounce our willingness to expand and grow and then we produce that yes, that yes, that yes to birthing those desires, we not only heal ourselves, but guess what? We raise the vibration of the rest of the planet. And in that is the celebration of God. The vibration of love and joy is the vibration and the circulation of God. So can you imagine living with the clarity and power that comes from standing poised in your authentic divinity, discarding for once and for all that which no longer serves you, perhaps never did, and then with intention and integrity, speaking from your heart in order to give birth to spirit's wholeness in the form of your dreams. Can you imagine the world that we would have? It's what we seek to do here in this community. Let me put it another way. This church and this teaching exist to support you in living with the clarity and the power that come from standing in your authentic divinity. This church and this teaching exists to support you in discarding the stuff and the limited beliefs which do not serve you and indeed never have. And finally, this church and this teaching exists to support you in giving birth to spirit's wholeness and radiant aliveness in the expression and manifestation of your dreams. So if you like those ideas, if that works for you, I have an invitation. This Friday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to be putting feet to our prayers, okay? The burning bowl service will be a chance for all of us, including me, to go within, to ask questions of your heart, and to let go of 2021 so that together we may all move into 2022 unencumbered by the past. We will meditate, we will journal, we will identify, and we will write down what's calling to be released. Then we will burn those lists in this sacred ritual, which has traditions and roots going back literally generations, literally generations. There's a deep mysticism in, in burning it. And I hope you will join me in letting what, 20, what happened in 2021 stay in 2021, but let's do it mindfully. Let's do it thoughtfully and with a clear intention. So I have to say that my prayer for all of us as we close the books on 2021 is this. May we all be made free in the alchemy of release. May we all rise like the phoenix from the ashes of our stories, our fears, and our limitations. Embrace all of it, dear ones. You're worth it. You are God. You are God's ta-da. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. So together we just simply take a breath and go within. Connecting with the truth that has brought us here, which unites us here, which connects us. That there is one power, one presence, one life, and that is God. And it is absolutely perfect, and it is the truth, the deepest truth about each and every one of us. As we accept this for ourselves, we accept it for each other. And I know and I am certain that it lifts us up into greater receptivity and knowingness in possibility. We release any shackles of thought. We release any ideas of limitation and move simply into that light, that light of knowing that right where I am, God is and all is well. All is radiant aliveness and possibility. So I know that each of us is that tada of God. We are that celebration. And as we accept this knowing and this divine truth of who we are, that we let God divine us and the world not define us, I am certain that we are blessed and that 
everyone here is blessed. We bless each other. We bless this community. And I know that this church indeed is absolutely lifted up. So we bless this church, all churches, all paths to God, all mosques, all ashrams, all synagogues, all of it, all of it, all of it. Because where the light shines, love is present. So we allow our light to shine and to be recognized and to recognize it in each and every person, each and every idea, every animal, everything on this planet as being a celebration, a tada of light. And how wonderful it is to know that we get to be, we get to be in this with each other and to love. So as we move out into this world, I know that we are the tada of God. We celebrate the winds, we bless the wines, and we move into that realm of wishes, knowing that they're more than wishes, that they are divine intentions that have been planted within us because we are the ones we have been waiting for. How wonderful to know this. So with gratitude, I release this word into law, knowing it is already so, and so it is, and together we say, amen. So we will sing at one time. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. So if you would take your offering or the idea of that offering, some of you might be giving automatically and know that we can deposit those offerings if they're checks or cash or whatever your gift is as you exit the sanctuary. But take that idea. Know that you are holding it symbolically, metaphorically in your hand and hold your hand to your heart, the source of light and love. And say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you, God. I am so Quickly, where can we get your music? Oh, you can find me. I'm streaming everywhere on Spotify and Amazon and Apple. Stream me, please. Susan Stream Edwards her. Martin. Stream yes. her. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. That was just wonderful. I so appreciate you. Yes, say yes. Life keeps happening every day. Say yes. When opportunities come your way, you can't stop wondering what to say. You never win if you never play. Say yes. There is mink and marigolds right outside, and long white Cadillacs you can ride. But nothing's gained if there's nothing tried. Say yes, yes. Don't say why. Say why. What lies beyond what is, is not. So what? Say yes, yes. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. Yes, I'll take a sip. Yes, I'll touch. Yes, of course. Yes, how nice. Yes, I'd happily thank you very much. Yes, oh. Lots of wheat, say yes. You might.
might get mugged as you cross the street But on the other hand, you might greet That handsome stranger you belong to meet Say yes, yes Yes, I'll walk, yes, I'll look Yes, I'd love to do such and such Yes, I'll try, yes, I'll dare Yes, I'll fly And yes, I'll share you all. Happy New Year. Is she so good? Yeah. She, that's God's ta-da right there. <laughs> you are a big old ta-da. Not old. You're a big ta-da. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have you here, Susan. <laughs> I've known you for quite a while, but she's our very own Broadway star. And don't forget, you can also find her music on unlimitedsusanedwardsmartin.com. Take your mask off. Oh, oh yeah. Really well. Did you hear me? Yeah. OK. <laughs> then I won't say it again. All right, announcements. This is. If this is your first time at our church, we're delighted you're here on whatever device. And please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. Ways you can make donations. Call the office, 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give to 818 818- 457-3419. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person or on Zoom, or and on Zoom. There will be no Wednesday evening service on December 29th. Join practitioner Joanne O'Brien on Wednesday, January the 5th, 2022, for a wonderful Teze service with potluck on the patio following. Meditation begins at 6.50 and the service is at 7. The youth church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service. We welcome youth of all ages. The 2022 Journey of the Heart Pledge forms are available online and in the foyer. Grief Support Group on Zoom. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today on Zoom at 1 o'clock. Blanket drive for the homeless. We're collecting new and clean used blankets again this year. If you get a new blanket, give us your old one. Wash it first. For the homeless, please drop blankets off in the red bins outside the sanctuary today and on January 2nd. Distribution will be on J Sunday, January 2nd. Contact Gilda Gomez for more information. Her number is 818-383-0453. New Year's Eve burning bowl service and potluck, Friday, December 31st, 7 to 8.30. Prepare for 2022, which she has explained so well already by standing in the st strength and power of your dreams. Join Reverend Sidney for a guided and sa sacred ritual of prayer, meditation, and journaling to release 2021. Child care will be available in the youth church. After service, we'll have a potluck on the patio because we love to eat. And we're going to have an early midnight. Oh. We, br we bring your favorite dish to share. 2022 goal sheets are available on the patio and on our website. 
please complete self-address and stamp and return it to Gold's box or go to, to the church if you access the sheet online. Hmm. Oh, okay. We'll mail it back to you in December 2022. 2022 Goal Setting Workshop with Reverend Sidney Steen, Saturday, January the 8th, 2022, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Join her in person or on Zoom for this powerful and productive workshop. With visioning, visualization, and journaling, you will reveal and clarify the highest intentions and greatest vision for your life in 2022. Sign up on our website today. The cost is 35 bucks. The bookstore is closed today, but be sure to go in next Sunday to get your 2022 January Science of Mind magazine to start the year off right with a healthy dose of retail therapy. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Visit our website, North NH, uh, nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And that's the end of those. <laughs> So, do we stand? Uh, you can. All right. Yeah, Bye. But, and this was a plot twist, by the way, too, because um, I found out late last night that the practitioner who was supposed to be on pulpit was not going to be available because of some family stuff going on. So as she drove in the parking lot, <laughs> we lassoed Pat and said, would you do this? And she went, okay. So thank you. Because that's You're what welcome. we do. We say yes. Thank you. Let's stand up and sing. truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Let's go out today. Follow me. <laughs>